Hello and welcome to These Are The Times. I'm Erica Perrot and welcome Illuminate. Yes, I didn't leave you guys hanging. I didn't. What happened was, well, they, um, they put me in jail <laughs> over here on YouTube. Yeah, so the day that I went to put up the last, buy, uh, the last um, Illuminate that I did, well, I couldn't. But it is on buymeacoffee.com forward slash illuminate. So if you haven't, go check out my blog site. It's free to follow and you never know what you'll find while you're there. But today, we're going to do this a little different. I'm not going to bring you, well, you could call it a world problem. But today, we're going to do some perspective shifts. And you know what? I have one for you guys because... With sitting and writing my book and really getting into this descriptive part now and fattening it up. I can't help but to keep coming back to these conversations that I had with my grandmother. You know, my devout seventh day at Venice church wife grandmother. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm so thankful for that woman because she set me up for a life of fulfillment and freedom. Because that woman had, she raised my mother the same way. And you know, we had a conversation one day about why she thought my mother went left, even though she showed her how to go right. And we'll get to that at the end. But it's amazing to me that a woman that I watched serve a higher while walking in this world with some lower forms. I'm thankful is all I can say. But in writing this book, the, the title has changed numerous times. It's morphed. And at the beginning, the title was Guide My Words. And, you know, as the book has developed, I have learned that that's a chapter. And, you know, I watch humans walk around saying this say statement with such naive knowings surrounding it. I wish the world would change. When will this world change? Unaware that they are the world. Each and every human and every outdated belief thought, word pattern that you pass on, you're creating your world, our world. Why won't it change? You won't allow it to change. You keep dragging things with you that you've not even tested out to make sure that it is your belief. It's a belief because someone you love and trusted told you that, but you haven't sifted through it to make sure that it's yours and you know I, I was live on Facebook earlier and, and I, I went on one and I was talking about unequivocal desire because see it's a great thought that because you create a child you should want to be there but humanity has lived under a lot of illusions and one is we have a lot of unrealistic expectations and it doesn't matter if it's a living, breathing child, a business, a plant. There has to be an unequivocal desire to want that thing to show up for that thing. Yeah, it, it's a great thought to think that children are more important than a business you open or a dog you choose to go adopt. But they're all equally important. You know why? Because they're all creations. They should hold the same level of importance, the same level of nurturing. But instead, humanity has told you and nurtured the thought process over time. Well, one thing is more important than the other. Or we set this up and it should go this way. Unless it's your family, then there's an exception. There comes a time when we just have to break the illusion and stand in the truth because no one said that you were going to like the truth, but the truth is everything is a creation, including the words you speak. And I had 
a conversation when I was a child with my grandmother. Because, see, she knew something that I didn't know yet. I was 11, getting ready to turn 12. She knew I was getting ready to move. I was about to move in the next year when this conversation took place. She knew that I was getting ready to be put into my mother's home. I didn't know this was coming. She knew that she wasn't going to be there for me to readily look at and be like, even though my gut might be telling me something else. And in that one year, whoo, buddy, it was like the gross spurt of all gross spurts. But now looking back on it, I appreciate that woman for throwing the book at me. Because see, some of you all don't talk to your children about things. Or you shove it off. And then you expect them to somehow figure it out. What? Let's use sex for an example. When I was 11 years old, my grandmother sat me down and she looked at me and she said, Erica, we're going to have a conversation today. She said, and I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to be having this conversation, but I'm a parent. I wish I'd have had this courage when your mother was your age. She said, but things were different then. I knew what I knew then, but I know what I know now. So we're going to have this conversation. I'm going to get you well equipped. Because the world's going to teach you in health class and science class all about the biology of your body. She said, but I'm going to teach you the soul side of your body. And she sat me down and she looked at me and she said, every human loves sex. I don't care who you are. Now, mind you, my grandfather passed before I was born. So she had been a widow for quite a many years. But she looked at me and she said, sex is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with it. She said, I miss it. She said, but sex, when used incorrectly, it can be dangerous. It can have you thinking you need to remain somewhere when you don't. Sex with the wrong person will feel the same as it does with the right person. On the surface, she said, but with the right person, she said, can't nobody touch what that feels like. Can't nobody duplicate that. She said, I know I'm a Christian, she said, and I know many people will tell you, don't sleep around. She said, I'm not going to say those words. She said, but what I will tell you is this. Your body is your home. You have to live in it always. So make sure you create and invite things into your home that you want there. Because you might let something in your home that brings you something that will stay with you for the rest of your life. It might be a child. It might be a disease. It might be a heartache that you can't come from up under. But guard your home. Let people in wisely. Yes, a seventh day at Venice, pastor's wife told me that. But see, instead what we have is a bunch of people running around trying not to talk about sex and trying to act like it's taboo or it's such a bad thing. And then we wonder why we have a high rate of abortions. Well, because right after you told them that it wasn't okay to fulfill themselves sexually and learn about masturbation and learn about their body, you told them that wasn't okay. But then you also told them, well, now that you're in this position with a person that you have zero desire to be with and you have zero desire to have a child, you still going to have to have it because killing is wrong. I'm going to tell you what my grandmother told me about abortion. I was 13 when we had this conversation. She said, Erica, as a Christian woman, she said, I get some hard looks all the time. She said, but guess what? I can live with it. She said, because people forget you got to live with what you create. She said, now I'm going to tell you how I feel about abortion. She said, and I don't want you to take this personally, but I have to use you as an example for you to get it. When your mother came home and told me she was pregnant with you, I was done. I was through, Erica, and here's why. That woman didn't need to be having kids. Nothing about her needed to produce another thing. Not like that. She said, but you know what? She said, even though the thought of abortion crossed my mind, she said, I never let the words leave my mouth. And she said, here's why. I was sitting in a position that I could do something about it. She said, and I did. She said, I already knew how the chips were going to fall once you came out of her. I would take you. There wasn't even going to have to be a conversation about it. You know why? Because I know Pam. 
And Pam is always going to do what she wants to do. And well, that doesn't involve having a child attached to you. She said, so I was completely okay. She said, because see, I always wanted a daughter. She said, and I got it when I got you. I got my blessing through my lesson of your mother. So I'm thankful for that adoption of her and that lesson and everything I learned, which has made me be able to be where I am because we're going to do this different this time. I'm not going to do what I did before. I know where I messed up before. See, before I was saying a lot of things that I thought were right, but I didn't know how wrong I was. She looked at me and said this, it changed my whole life. She said, Erica, you know why I'm never going to tell another human on this planet that abortion is wrong? She said, because if I'm not in a position to take that child or their life on, then I just created something that I'm now going to have to live with. She said, because if my words make you feel guilty and you know that that's not what needs to be happening for your life, let alone this unborn, this unmatured, molded or born yet child's life. But I guilt you into thinking that's what you need to be doing. She said, I'm responsible for what my words did. She said, I ain't got time to be living like that. Do you? She said, so while no, I don't like the idea of abortion. I'm in no position to tell anybody what to do with their life path, even though I am a Christian. Damn, the power of your words hold a responsibility as much as the power of one's actions. You got people walking around here in trials and tribulations going, but I'm a good person. I don't understand why I'm being met with these trials. Go examine your words. What are you saying to other people? What situations are your words creating that are making difficulties for others? That's why you still walking in difficulties. Your words are life and death. It's great to think this is how it should be, but it's time to get to reality of what it is. And while there may be things on this earth that you dislike, that does not make them any less true. When will abortion rates go down? When y'all stop putting a stigma around sex and you start having real conversations with people and you start letting them know it's okay if you fulfill yourself yourself until you find that one that you ready to be unequivocally attached to it always and it's worth it but no instead we try to sugarcoat and dance around it because it's the topic that kind of makes me uncomfortable why you think we got 20 something 30 something and 40 something year old still walking around feeling uncomfortable about a word sex because you allowed it to happen you birthed and nurtured that shit the children will live out the sins of their fathers and mothers. Y'all haven't done anything new to create a new world. That's why the world will not change. It's time to guide your words and understand what you're saying. Because see, she's right. I don't like that thought of abortion. And not every case is the same. But if you've told somebody that they should do something and keep something because it makes you feel bad or because you think it's wrong, well, I dare you to get up, move into their house and take over their life. Assist them since your words needed to escape your mouth and make them feel guilty. Go pick your life up, stop what you're doing and go assist them. And see, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, but there's always adoption. Let me tell you what my grandmother said about adoption. She said, Erica, I'm a woman that I, I've raised many children and fostered many children. And your mother is a product of adoption. I adopted her when she was only hours old. She said, and you know what happened? She said, I thought by adolescence that I had made the biggest mistake of my life. She said, because what happens when people adopt is they have no ties to this person. No biological ties. They get a gift that they hold no answers to. That at some point, this gift is going to need some answers. So you want to tell a person to have a kid and let them be adopted? Well, guess what? Now there's a responsibility because at some point, that kid 
is going to need some things answered that only that parent that walked away can answer. And who's to say that parent is going to be around to answer them questions? And you who adopted them, you'll never be able to answer them. So you still got a problem on your hands. So like Emma so kindly reminded me, adoption sounds good until, well, you're in the middle of it. Choose your words wisely, but better yet, quit handing down beliefs that you haven't tested out to find out if it's even something you need to be believing in and standing on. Because that is why you keep seeing the world you're seeing. You're not giving the people that are coming up in it a chance to be anything other than what has already happened. This goes for abortions, racism, all of it. It is time to unattach because someone else knew it. My grandmother was the queen of telling me something just to see if I would go do it because I trusted her. And she never told me stuff that would get me hurt or harmed. It'd always be something playful, but it drove the point home. Stop running off with something because someone that you love and trust told you that that might be the case. I dare you to go further investigate it is what she would tell me. If I've taught you something and a year from now I come back and ask you about it and the only thing you can tell me is what I've already told you, did you learn anything? No, you only knew what I know. You didn't go learn shit for yourself. May this be the year that accountability doesn't stifle you, but you can actually get past your feelings and let it elevate you. Because whether you like it or not, baby doll, we are all sitting under the age of accountability. Be well, be blessed. And if you haven't done so, please go ahead, subscribe, like, share, comment, and have a beautiful rest of your day. I promised you that I would tell you why my grandmother said she knew why my mother went left, even though she showed her how to go right. See, my grandmother was from a different day and age, and they was busy back then. It was civil rights days when they were still trying to raise kids. And it wasn't that raising kids was less important. It was they were people who were always doing, so they assumed that by their children seeing how they were showing up, that that was enough. They didn't have the time to always stop and have the uncomfortable conversations. They might have the time to be like, nah, we are not doing this today and then go on. But every little thing they did, they didn't always have the time to stop and explain themselves. That's what she meant by, we gonna do this different with you, Erica. Because I'm gonna tell you and show you. I'm not just gonna show you and assume that you'll repeat it. Be blessed.